then there's another study that Mr. Gondo has just done on his own tree. And that is when he repots anything in it and anything that's in a clay or clay type container, something that's a little bit porous, he never goes back into the same container as he took the tree out. He showed us slides that show the growth every year of the, of the root system. And the root system that went into a pot that had been used for a while, for a year or so, that had been allowed to air out, the roots grew out to the edge of the pot the first year, down the side the second year, and filled in the third year. On pots that had been used before, the roots came within a half an inch of the side, and there they stopped. They didn't do anything else. And his theory and what he sh showed by testing was in the fermentation of the ground and the fertilizer that used to do the uh, trees, a gas was formed that penetrated the pot. And he couldn't find anything that would wash it out. But if you left it set for a year without a tree in it, it showed no signs of the gas in the pot, then the tree grew out to the edge of the pot again. That's a good sales tactic for a pot seller, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Except being gone, there wasn't selling. Let's start off with soil. If you buy, excuse me, if you buy an azalea from Japan, it's grown in Kanuma, do not change the soil. Do not try to put it in fir bark and the other good stuff that they grow in the ground here. Because you guys, you people love Johnny and Cheetah. When Johnny Uchida came to the United States in 1944, he went to work in some truck yards for, for a farmer that did cantaloupes with a whole bunch of other Japanese fellows. And he went out into the field and they served you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And he was again. You can ask Johnny. He said he has never been so sick in his life. He thought he was going to die because they fed him bacon and eggs for him. <coughs> he was used to rice and green tea. They fed him beef for dinner, and he said when he was used to a little bit of fish and some rice and noodles and green cabbage. And he said he said changing to the food that they fed them. They couldn't work, they were just sicker than dogs. The same thing with your zeta. Changing the content of the soil they used to grow it into will make them sick. They might survive, they might not. If you have a nice established bonsai that has been growing here and started here and is in a soil that drains exceedingly well. Don't change it to Kanemba. I was shocked when Yonder told me not to change it. And Osaka Suki I had. I had an old Osaka Suki and I said, well I'd like to change it to, to Kanemba. And he said, that's sure that. <coughs> Make sure the soil you're in is extremely well drained. Make sure that the soil stays the same dampness all the way through. Something that will grow that's the same dampness all the way through. You mix canuma with our soil, 
Kanuma stays wet longer. Uh, and so you have wet and dry spots because you haven't really mixed it totally even. don't feel that that should be repotted now. No. No, you do not repot when it's done this severe pruning. You can repot next year when you're taking out just the unnecessary stuff and, and leaving these branches and you didn't bring it back quite this far. You do not repot the same year it blooms. So if it blooms, <coughs> Wait until after it blooms, let the payments figure again a little bit, and repot. But, but, but we most usually repot in the second of the, of the three year stage, in the second year, if you're going to repot. Repotting is a controversial thing again. It depends upon how root bound it is, how vigorous you want it to grow. When it's left alone, it seems to grow a little faster, a little stronger. Now this is three years. I wouldn't mind waiting until five if it needed it. If it starts pushing up out of the pot. growing fast enough that it's pushing this up and so that these feeder roots you need on the surface are in danger of drying out because they aren't down far enough to get off the bottom and do the edges and start over again. See, fertilizer, soil, what else? Any suggestions on living in that moss or fungus or whatever it is? <coughs> or canuma? That green stuff, fungi canuma, might be moss, but it's 
also almost a form of uh, mycorrhizal. So the green is a really bad. Well, the other thing is this tree should have been covered with moss, sphagnum moss, green moss, whatever you call it. I keep the, the, the package you buy it in says green moss in big letters. And everybody says, oh, you mean sphagnum moss. I didn't read sphagnum moss anywhere. I read green moss. <laughs> but it's that stringy stuff that you use to make uh, planter box things like. You cut that up in quarter to half inch lengths with scissors. Cut, cut, cut. Because you want it about a quarter inch deep on this pot. Because it is an insulator, number one. Number two, it prevents the soil from running out. If you overfill it, the soil tumbles out. The green moss, after you cut it, you put it in water and you wash it and take the little twigs out if there's any. So take twigs. This is after you when you repot. This soil is totally dry when you repot. Always repot with dry soil. Because wet soil comes up, dry soil will fall in the grass. Then when the soil dry, you put this wet sphagnum, lift it out with your fingers, pat it on the top at least a quarter inch thick. Then you water your tree. You water it until the water comes through the bottom clear. You wait 20 minutes and water it again. But that sphagnum moss wet on top of that dry soil, that dry soil actually pulls the fibers of the sphagnum down in the little cracks, and it stays there. In Japan, they grow the regular green moss over the top, but then you guys don't have any problems with moss soil, so I'm going to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it will actually go over the top. But sphagnum moss is an insulator, and it keeps the tree from getting too cold. It keeps it from getting too hot. You say, I can't see if my tree is dry or not. In Japan, they don't look. If you, this is dry. I hope somebody waters it tonight. This is dry. When, when, you, when it's dry, pick it up, feel how heavy it is, set it down. Put that in your mental bank. <coughs> yeah. Do you do that to all your plants or just all the bed? Well, see, you got to realize where I live. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I put it on everything. Because I live where it's hot. So I put it on my Japanese maples. Because they grow we live, we want water to be able to flow in. We don't have to worry about being too hard. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know that you want the water to <coughs> Also realize that, that sphagnum moss has a hormone, something in it, because when you do root, when you do air layering and all this other stuff, what do you put around there? Sphagnum moss. Not only because it holds moisture for that here, also because it's got a natural thing that stimulates roots. And you want as many fine roots up here on this soil surface as you can get. So I'd like to see you if you take it when you take it home. If you've got some green moss, I'd like to see the green moss fit up around here, you know, so you can still see these roots but but fit up around here as a protection and an encouragement. 